So how to do something like this? It's really easy, guys. It's not that hard. What I did first thing first, you're going to need some type of motivation, you know, always. I, and I stress this a lot. People talk about having references and I used to be like, eh, eh, I don't need references. Who needs references? You need references. The first thing I did was I found out what shot I wanted to recreate. And again, this is something I do. I spent an hour in Blender, Octane in particular. I spent an hour in there just playing. Like some stuff gets posted, some stuff doesn't. But my main objective is just to play in it for one hour. Like you're playing with Legos, right? So this was the shot. I was like, I was going through this uh, shot deck thing that I find the movie clips from. And I was like, okay, this is cool. Maybe I can find, I can figure this out, right? It's a very simple shot, not too complicated. This was my motivation. So if you come back over here and we see what I've got here, we're, you know, we were pretty close. I got pretty close. There was a couple of models that I couldn't find. Again, I'm going to show you where I got all of these models from. Now, one quick thing, if you're using Blender Octane, which you really should be, it's not a big deal to use Blender Octane. You can switch over to Cycles. It's not like you're committed to Octane forever. But this whole render I built inside of Octane, okay? So what I did was, First of all, we got this gray render. How do we set that up? It's super easy. Right here, clay render mode, set to gray, right? Set to none, boom, now we're done. That easy, super that easy to set that up. All right, so I'm gonna break down this scene for you guys a little bit. Now, again, you can see I tried to get it in the render as close as possible to my reference. Like I want, so I will have to do less post-processing work. So the lighting, the mood, trying to get everything as close as possible. I got all of these models on Sketchfab. These were all free models I searched on Sketchfab. Down in this video, I have a, a little PDF file or something where I have all the links for the models that I use in particular. Small commercial break. If you're getting any value out of this video, guys, smash that like button for me. And as a gift or smashing that like button, you can jump over to my Gumroad. I've got all of this free stuff here for Blender Octane. Materials, little add, little plugins and things that I've been working on, like this little geo drop generator for Octane Blender. And again, I've got just assets that I've made from different projects. I put them all on this gum rope. Almost every, actually everything on here is free, except these two little VFX courses. Everything else is free, guys. I got a free Blender Octane startup file, which you just download this, helps you get started up. The, the, the settings and everything is all set up. You just pop the file in and you're ready to go. If you're interested in that, take a look at the gum rope. Lots of free stuff. And if you're really serious and you wanna go hardcore, Take a look at my Blender Octane School community right now for the next week. I'm gonna be taking five bucks off. So it is 10 bucks, normally costs 15 bucks to get in a month. This is 10 bucks straight up. Or if you wanna pay annual, you, that option has just been added. So take a look, we got material asset. You can come in here and I got a big material asset library that is constantly growing. You can have access to it. We got node setups, one-on-one -on -one with me, whatever you guys need community help. This is where it's at, Blender Octane. Back to the video, enough of my jibba jabba. Now, these were all set up for cycles, right? So what I ended up having to do when I was searching for my materials, I wanted to make sure that I can choose materials that had PBR materials, okay? That had image materials. So that makes it easier for me to convert them, okay? So like, for example, my light, the lamp here, the lamp was a little bit more intense. Like they allowed you to change the color of the lamp. So what I ended up doing was, okay, I'm just going to rebuild my own shader on this and which I did here. And even on the light shade, I'm trying to get uh, on the light shade. I'm trying to get like some subsurface happening again. I didn't do a good job at it. Like I wanted the light to kind of come through like, you know, like it, like it was in the reference. If you look at the reference, we got this light coming through here. So this is my first time pushing myself to learn these things. And like, now I know how I can figure out how to get this look to, you know, how to get something to seem like the light is coming through it, okay? So then we had the phone here and we got the ashtray. Again, I was able to find almost all of these assets on, on uh, Sketchfab here, right? My scene is a little dark because I'm going for that dark moody look, but for the right now, I'm gonna crank it up just so we can see, set my output to one. Okay, and this is what we got here. This is the, pretty much the whole scene. Again, I've got this black wall here because in, in the film industry, that's what we use, a black bounce. I've worked in film, I've worked in lighting before, back in Cali, and we will use a black diffuse board to take away light, to make the shadows more contrasty. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted more contrast on this side, so I used the blackboard. And then we got this back wall, again, just making a corner of the wall so the light can bounce around and get that. A lot of people wouldn't do that. They would just leave these open and then the light is just gonna go out there, right? You need to recreate the scene. Like there was a back wall and there was a side wall, I know that. So then that's what I did here. 
Then we've got this little uh, desk here. Very easy setup. This one wasn't too bad. Again, PBR materials. And then some PBR materials, you'll notice they'll, they'll have like this uh, RGB setup. Like the blue is going to the metal and the red is going to the diffuse and the green is going wherever. You can easily still do that. We got an RGB split node right here. Then I can just go ahead and split that out. RGB, just like I would do in cycles. It's not a big thing. For those of you who don't know, I've got this massive utility packet here that I'm working on. It's actually available in my Blender Octane school. If you guys are serious about Blender and you really want to learn Octane, I got a school with a massive, we got this material library. Here's my material library that we're community, we're building. As we build materials, we throw them into this community pot every month. We update the file and it's just getting bigger and bigger. This is the V4 version. I'm working on the V5. The V5 is a lot more larger. We've got some more, a lot more stuff going on in that one. And then thing is here, but I got a couple of utility nodes in here too like an RGB, uh, separate RGB. I got a roughness generator, which we can just our own custom, you know, grunge maps and stuff like that. But anyway, that's for a whole nother different video. Now you can see how I experimented with this to get that to seem like the light was coming through here. And again, that I just literally took the shade and brought it down because it's just set up for the shot. Then I had this uh, 3D scan I found on uh, Sketchfab, which was of an ashtray, which, you know, it, it's a little bit wonky. Look, it's not even sitting on there flat because the scan was like scanned at an angle. So the scan technically is not even flat, but for in the shot, it works well in the shot. So that was, the, you know, the thing about that. And then from there, what I actually did, I have another garbage asset. Check this out. If I come over here into my garbage asset, I can go down to Blender Octane trash asset. Okay. This was a trash asset that I bought for cycles, right? It was originally for cycle. It's got all these trash, like presets, cigarettes, just trash. Well, I spent about, you know, a couple of weeks on converting these over to Octane. So this thing is fully now made for Octane. So I got all these little assets that I can add in here. Again, this is available in my Blender Octane community. But overall, look at this scene, guys. It's, it's very simple. You see, I've got my HDR here, but I, I changed the color on it because it was making my scene too warm. And then the rest was dialing my light in, trying to get that light to be as close as moody as possible. I think it was at 0.05, right? 0.05. And once I had this, I exported out EXR files, okay? If you're serious about rendering, don't render PNGs. Don't render, you know, MPEG videos straight out of here. Render EXRs. So if I come into my settings here, you'll see here, uh, I have my MPEG video set up because I don't render using blenders. I just want to MPEG video from blender. And then I come down here to my octane output and on my octane output down here, this allows me to set up all my render stuff that I need here. H uh, EXR 16 bit ACES CG. Okay. So once I had my EXRs uh, exported out, I did not render this. I rendered one frame to find out how long it was going to take. And then I took my whole file. I came in here, exported my file out as a right here. If you can see it octane orbix file orbx file after i save that file it exports out everything it exports my data and then i took that file to this website so i brought that file over here to the render network the otoy render network is like a cloud service render rendering farm it's super quick of course it's not free but it is paid but once you get in there guys literally take that orbix file drop it in here and then boom i can render out like it took literally like 10 minutes to render out 250 frames, which was taking about two minutes, one frame, because I had the samples up to like 2000 samples, and it was taking about two minutes to render out the frame. It took 10 minutes to render out 250 frames, like boom, it was done. You got the render network. Again, right now it only works with Blender Octane. So if that's something you're into, hit me up in the comments down below. I can make a video about the, the, the whole process. Actually, I'm it's already on the plan. I am making a video on the whole process on that. After I got it back from the render farm, I've been watching the Gleb Alexandrov's freemium. Take a look, a freemium Blender Octane, the Blender 2 Resolve course, because I use Blender and I also use DaVinci Resolve. So I took my EXRs over there to start using the workflow that he had. To, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm plugging this video right now. You should go down there and download it. It's free. If you can give them some change, give them some change. You have to watch this if you're serious about CG. Then I jumped in DaVinci Resolve to start working on putting this quick little cinematic, you know, intro in. And this is where I also experiment on how to do the, the workflow that from Gleb is teaching, which is absolutely fantastic. I've learning a lot. Like I already knew 
a, a linear EXR workflow to DaVinci Resolve, but the stuff that he teaches, I mean, there were a few things that I were doing wrong where I wasn't getting the maximum, the maximum exposure. I wasn't getting the maximum data out of my things. So watching his course, absolutely game changer and really helped me to do my color grading uh, on this whole setup here. If I open up this here and could just quickly give you guys a glance at it because this, this is complicated. This can be a whole nother video. If you guys want some info about that, let me know down below. Give me some comments and I'll even make, you know, what I'm doing, what I've learned from him. I'll teach you guys also here. But you can clearly see that I've got over here this whole little setup. We've got like this exposure note, which allows me to control the exposure of the shot. I mean, look at that. I'm like, look how far I can go before it gets really blown out. And look how low I can go. Like the range that you got from EXRs, it's sick. And then here, this is where like, if I turn these off here, let's go ahead and turn everything off. Let me show you. This is what it comes look. This is what it looks like when it comes in raw. Okay, this is the raw EXR file. So what we do is we drop a linear to log. So I need to take my file from linear and I'm making it into log. And look at what I'm look. Look what I'm using, guys. Check this out. Take a look. Take a look at my setup here. I'm using RE wide gamut with the RE log C. Now I can I film stuff. So having i know the 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 the, uh, the re wide gamut is it's fantastic like you got so much range well coming from an exr workflow we can choose any type of gamut so it's literally like i shot this footage on an re right i mean it's, it's close it's basically as close as i could possibly get without having an re camera and actually filming it because i'm coming from an exr linear base so once i chose that then i can come back so then what i do is i turn it from log to a rec 709 so we can see it in our on our computer here. This is basically how like you were in Blender. You have your Rec 709 to what is it? AGX, whatever. Now I'm converting it over so it can be seen on everybody's monitors, right? So this is basically back. This is the this is the look that I had inside of Blender. But then I come over here and add this color, this exposure node right in the front here. And now I have control of all that data. Look at all that data I have. It's, a, it's absolutely fantastic. And then I come over here at the end, I start doing my color grade. I'm using the Dehancer plugin, which is a, a helps me to get that film look. It's basically uh, old, all the old, a bunch of film looks like Kodak. I'm using the Kodak Vision 500T film profile, right? I've got grain, I've got bloom, I've got halation, all that film damage. You know, it's, it's crazy. It gets deep. I'm just, I'm just excited with this new workflow. So I just wanted to make this quick video just to share the love. If you guys are into this, you want to get into Blender Octane. You gotta watch this video here where I'll show you guys how to get started and get set up with Blender Octane. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Patrick LeVar, peace. I'm out.